really the first game that I ever did was was called Popular Soon. It was back in 1989, and the weird thing is that the world of making computer games is kind of like it was. It's kind of the same as what it is now, in that just recently, in the last two years, you've got a lot of these small developers coming up, and they're doing apps, and they're doing things for the apps, and they're doing things for the for Facebook, and things for XBLA, and for Sony Home, and, you know, just around where I live, there must be about five of these developers, and that's exactly what I was back in the early days of, of Populous. Um, and I just... Me and a, a friend of mine, we just worked on this crazy idea about this game where you could raise and lower the land and you would, we kind of called you a god, you weren't really a god. And we, the amazing thing back then, like now, is, you know, there were a hundred games being released a week and there were loads of different machines, there was Atari ST and the Amiga and the and the Amstrad and the Sinclair Spectrum and it, there was just tons and tons of different machines just like now you've got the iPhone and the Android and Facebook and you know a whole load of platforms and this game came out and we thought oh you know we didn't know what we were really making and we released it and it was just unbelievably successful and because it was I think mainly because it was a little bit different and then after after Populous we then went and started going, we went from two people to about five people and we made a game called Syndicate, which was one of the first games that truly had, uh, well, this was the recipe of the game. Give the player a minigun and let them loose in a city of innocent bystanders and see what happens. That's what Syndicate was. This is in the days where you could be politically incorrect like that. Yeah, the good old days. The good old <laughs> days, yeah. And then, and then we went on, and that again was quite unique, and then we really went on, the next thing that happened, we made a game called Magic Carpet, which <laughs> bizarrely was a game where you kind of played this character standing on this carpet that, could, that flew over a landscape. It's weird how now we've got Connect, you know, that feels... You could do a game based on magic carpet with connect you standing on a, a magic carpet and then after that we took a really huge detour and made um, a game called theme park that was where you designed and built your own theme park and that kind of reminds me of it kind of looked a bit like the facebook games you see like the zynga games uh, way back and that was back in 1995 and then we went on and made game called Dungeon Keeper where you played the bad guy and then uh, Black and White where you again you played a god and you had this creature and there was lots of AI in it then we started on Fable made Fable 1 and Fable 2 so here we are at Fable 3 and the funny thing is if I go back over all those games that you've seen Fable 3 has bits of all of those games in it you know, there are some unique things in Fable 3. You know, we've completely done away with a lot of the systems that were in Fable 1 and Fable 2. Why? Because they were very confusing. We've got a completely unique story. It's about being a king. It's about half the game is about being a rebel and overthrowing this evil king and then being a king. Well, that's kind of like being a god, isn't it? You know, what's your kingdom going to be like? They, they, you know, I can remember saying that same thing back in Populous. We're doing that because I love the idea of you feeling kind of powerful. I love putting a player in the feeling, in the position of power, and I love the idea. And even back in the Populous days, it was all about okay, you could cast an earthquake, but all these little people have all got killed and drowned and sunk in swamps. You know, do you really care? Well, not really, because I, you know, I just want to, to cast earthquakes. Well, it's the same. In Fable 3, when you're king, your kingdom can be the most horrible place on earth, you know, where the people are suffering. Do you care? And that's, you know, that's interesting. In Fable 3, we've got this completely unique weapon system where, you know, a lot of Fable 3 is about fighting. And, you know, I was getting a bit bored with fighting, to be honest with you. I mean, not only in Fable, but in a lot of games, because... Because what I love in games, I love new weapons. I love finding and discovering new weapons. 
And what we wondered in Fable 3 is there's something we could do with that. And so the weapons in Fable 3, instead of you finding them randomly in chests, the weapons in Fable 3 you make. They start off as these, this is plain simple thing. It's just a, a sword, it just looks like a normal sword. And as you use it, as you kill and defeat and win battles, the style of your, your button presses on the controller, what you kill, how you kill them, means that your sword will slowly change and morph to be unique, totally unique to you. And it was a reflection of what you're like as a gamer, what your sword's like. And if you mash the button a lot, which I know a lot of you out there will do, you'll just smash that button, no matter what I say as a designer to you, you'll still smash the button, your sword will be shorter, it'll be stubbier, because you'll need to do fast moves. If you're holding the button or you're, move, you're hitting with timing, your sword will be longer. If you die a lot, you'll have little notches in your sword. If you kill innocent things, your sword will drip with blood. Now, this idea, I think, is quite a unique one in that you're crafting the weapon that you're using by the way you use it. And that applies to swords and guns and, and magical items. So, you know, that was true. That's kind of like what we, the way, same way we were thinking back in the Syndicate days, the way we gave you these weapons and allowed you to be unleashed on, the, uh, um, on, these, pe on these people. You've got in Fable 3 you've got this dog and you've got a butler and you've got all these AI characters. These are definitely directly inspired by the stuff that we did on black and white. But rather on black and white it was just kind of fractured and broken and didn't fit into the story. This all fits in into the story that's there. And we've got a completely new, totally new interface. In fact, part of the interface for Fable 3 definitely is inspired by a, bit, uh, a piece in black and white. So I think a lot of what Fable 3 is, the uniqueness of the story, the sort of clarity and just accessibility of pick up and play of, of what the game is, is inspired by the games we've done before. And I think the most important thing it is there's a lot of humour in it. You can do some crazy things. Yes, it's, you know, it's an action adventure, there's an amazing story, but you can go out and you can um, choose anyone in the world and get married them and have kids with them and you can see what happens you know if you take them by the hand and take them to a bridge and push them off you can do, do mad things like that the whole game is completely cooperable we've always loved multiplayer even back as the early days of populous we've we you know populous was one of the first true multiplayer games we love co-op in multiplayer and fable so you're able to co-op at any part of the game I can invite you into my world and invite anyone I like into my world and everything you can do in the game you can do with your co-op partner including you can marry your co-op partner you have special hugs with your co-op partner you have children with your co-op partner you can set up home with your co-op partner so you know fable 3 is a totally unique game there's nothing like it and you know we have you know spent kind of in a way 20 years making it starting off with populous back in the day how were you able to market this game yeah back back in back in back in those days you know one of the things that was hard to do it was hard to get your game recognized and we i remember going around to publisher after publisher because there was a lot of publishers back in those days again it's very similar to today's world and just saying to them look here's this game what do you think of it? Will you publish it? I think we had 11 rejections. And a lot of publishers once said, well, that's fantastic, thank you very much for showing it. Can you, um, can you give the little people laser guns? And can they, can they shoot each other? And can we... No, you know, this is the game. It's, you know, it's all about you know, building landscapes. And so it was really hard to get it out there. And then what happened, bizarrely, is... It was totally picked up by the Japanese people over in Japan, and they became in, totally obsessed with populace. And there were, you know, there was a populace comic. There was a populace. They even did this, these crazy things, like they had the Japanese Symphony Orchestra do an hour-long concert inspired by the sound effects in populace. I mean, it was just mad 
obsessiveness about about this game, and that you know that kind of word of mouth then spread out throughout the world, and that it then you know it kind of went on to sell four million copies, which in those days was just um, you know amazing. Weirdly, bizarrely, Fable Two sold almost exactly the same number as copies copies as the original boxes. So are you expecting Fable 3 to sell nearly as many or way above that? I mean, you know, I'm the designer of the game. You know, whenever I design a game, I truly honestly believe that every person on the planet will sell their children to buy a game and it'll sell at least, you know, the population of America. You know, that's that's my win scenario is, you know, 250 million people will play it or something ridiculous like that. So how's uh, Kinect coming along for you? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing. I've been doing. I personally, I've been doing a lot of work on Connect and a lot of designing for Connect. Um, I think, and it's you, you know, this is not just me saying it because I'm you know a Microsoft employed person these days, but I think it's a really important device. I think it's a fantastic uh, device. It's a completely new way of interacting with computer entertainment. I think it is gonna give rise to a whole new breed and generation of games which we haven't even seen or imagined now and uh, you know if you wind forward a few years time I think we're going to be looking back at something which is going to obviously change what everybody thinks of, of computer games because it's what's so brilliant about it it is completely effortless to interact with it's not like a controller you know, the thing about a controller is if you give it to someone who's never used a controller, give a controller to someone who's never used a controller before, they have to use it for a good 10 hours before they get used to it. That's like skateboarding. It's like learning to skateboard. But with Connect is literally, the brilliant thing is you walk in front of it and you're there. And that is a fantastic thing. And that I pro that's me purely talking as a designer. It's not me talking as you know, someone who's reading out a script, it's, you know, it's true. That the only thing is that it makes people like me really sweat. So it's because, difficult to... Well, the problem is, is it throws away every rule that I have. Because if you can imagine, you know, over the 20 years, I've either been designing for the mouse or I've been designing for a controller. And, you know, I don't have to think about which button you press on the controller to swing your sword, it's easy, it's the, it's a blue button, it's always a blue button. I don't want to have to think about how you pause the game, you press the start button, it's true in every single game. So it's effortless to design for the controller. But when you take all of that stuff away, it means that I have to, I start designing a game with a totally blank sheet of paper. Not with a piece of paper which is already filled up with half a dozen rules. Uh, which is there, so it makes my life really tough. But you know, to discover great things and invent new ways of entertaining people, then really something like Connect is a fantastic enabler of that. Cool. Oh, Gosh, cool. those were amazing lines, weren't they? They, they were, were very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Yeah.